I say a phrase, you tell me what comes into your mind. Cool. Horse riding. Aristocracy. Somebody quite wealthy and who's mm -hmm. white. I've never seen a person of colour being a professional horse rider. Hey. Literally. Welcome to YouTube Reframe, the series that gives you the skills we all need for life online. Now, in today's episode, we're discussing something we all have. Some are big, some are strange, and some are so small you can't even see them. I am, of course, talking about bias. Sorry, bud. Talent only. Biases are a human trait resulting from our need to classify people into categories, which help us to process the world around us a little bit quicker. But then they're the biases we don't even realize we have. Now these are unconscious biases triggered by our brain making quick judgments about people we aren't consciously aware of. We're gonna be exploring what bias is, how it can be harmful, and how we can challenge our own bias by listening to the actual experience of the people around us. In this episode, our guest is para dressage rider Tegan Vincent Cook, who is breaking down biases in her own sport. I think the best one that sums me up is probably the laughing at loud emoji, probably because I laugh at everything. My screensaver is a picture of my horse, Coco. <laughs> Tegan is someone currently breaking the mould and challenging people's assumptions. And right now, we are at the stables where she is training for one of the world's biggest sporting events. She's taking a quick break because uh, one of the horses stubbed its toes, but uh, don't worry, it's in a stable condition. Tegan, good to meet you. How are you doing? Good to meet you. I'm good, <laughs> thank you. When you represent Britain in the Paralympics, that would make you, I believe you said, the first black female Paralympian uh, in equestrianism, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, yeah it would. Well, what's dressage then? Because I heard you wouldn't say it's like ballet on a horse. Yeah. What is it? I've got no idea. Dressage is the art of training and riding a horse. Not tons of diversity within it at the moment. No. So have you had assumptions based on that, that you've had to sort of battle as well? I am um, often looked at a lot because I am the only black person there. Mm -hmm. And it is quite a shock to people, I think. Yeah, you don't have to be kind of white, middle class, be able to enjoy a horse. You know, how has dressage been a way of kind of breaking down some of those barriers? When people see me riding, they are a bit shocked to see that I can control a very large animal mm -hmm. and that I can do it well. Can you tell me an assumption people make about you which is completely wrong? I think one that is completely wrong is that I'm very incapable. I think because of my disability, people assume that I can't do much. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are limits, but I can give those things to go and that I am mentally capable. Having a physical disability, people also question my intelligence. And how do these assumptions make you feel? Some are quite damaging to hear. Others kind of made me more determined to prove them wrong. It's a good motivation. I think someone's just giving your horse a ticket. Might need to... Sorry, mate, yeah, that's our horse, actually. <laughs> you know, I know it's a double yellow line, but that's... I thought that was allowed for horses. <laughs> to you, what does bias mean? To me, bias is something that everyone has, and it kind of affects the way that we perceive others. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of an internal judgment or thought that you have on someone. Where do you think your biases might come from? Definitely the socialisation that I grew up with. My personal experiences, mm -hmm. like school environments. I've got them, you've got them, everyone's got them. But actually, it feels like sometimes it can develop into a bit more than just this little thing we all have programmed into us. Where, when do you think biases become sort of dangerous? Well, when that bias turns into prejudice and the way that you see people and the way that you then treat people is when it becomes dangerous. But just on a broader level, you know, what are some of the, the, the dangers or the risks of people not checking their biases? Well, I think when you don't check your bias, you restrict yourself from knowing someone. I think sometimes bias can almost be like a block in your mind. So once you have a bias on someone, you can't see past that bias. Do you think you're biased? I think I do have biases. As a queer black woman, mm -hmm. I believe that I do feel more comfortable in queer spaces because I'm around people just like me. I come from East London. There's a sort of attitude towards people 
from that part of London that mm. we're not as, I guess, educated and mm. as eloquent. What do you reckon is the best way to, to kind of combat that biases? Like, what, what can we do? Educate yourself and experience the world. I think once you meet people outside of your culture, mm. I think you become more respectful and more in tune mm -hmm. and more aware of your personal biases and stopping yourself mm -hmm. from thinking that way. I guess it can feel scary when you call someone out for being biased because it could be yeah. a friend, it might be a family member. Well, I feel like to start off with, they are quite in denial and they might not understand where I'm coming from. And because of that, they are quite defensive. But I think once I try and explain that I'm not angry, but I just want to let them know how their words can be perceived and how it affects me, they don't understand what their words can mean to someone else. Yeah, I think it's important to kind of not be afraid to speak up. What are some of the things you think we can do to stop something like biases, which we all have, from turning into something more sinister like prejudice? Well, I think if we firstly listen to each other and if anyone does challenge you on your bias, you should listen and try to understand where they're coming from because it might be different to how you see it. Mm -hmm. I think also educate yourself on the communities around you. If you're more aware of the language that you use and be aware of the language that might be triggering or harmful mm -hmm. to friends and family around you mm -hmm. and other communities as well. It's hard to kind of get to know someone when you have a bias on the body. I guess it's asking from a place of curiosity yeah. rather than letting your questions be shaped by assumptions you already have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Look, we all have biases, okay? It's natural. However, if we leave them unchecked, they can negatively impact the way we see the world and the people in it, which can lead to prejudice and discrimination. The good news is, once we're aware of our biases, we can challenge them. And that starts with not making assumptions before we make up our minds about someone or something. Well, Tegan, thanks for having me, bringing me to the stables. It's been fun. Thanks for coming. Yeah. My cab's still not here, though, which is annoying. Oh, no. Do you want the ride here? What, on the horse? Yeah. All right, as long as you drive. Yeah, Go on, then. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's go to this guy, it looks fast. You've got your driver's license. If you'd like to find out more or need support, check out the links below.